did Meghan Markle go from this, walking out of St. George's Chapel on her wedding day in a tiara loaned to her by Her Majesty the Queen, which was originally worn by, I would say, the queen of all tiaras, Queen Mary, who was Queen Elizabeth's grandmother, to hawking New Agey pseudoscience stress patches on her wrist. Yes, how the mighty have really fallen here. The spectacular rise and fall of Meghan Markle is rather fascinating because this is a woman who could have had it all. And I think if she had played her cards right, she would be sitting on cloud nine right now. Instead, she is telling us literally by wearing something on her wrist that she is stressed. She is stressed and I don't totally blame her. Her marriage is apparently on the rocks according to many reports. Her and Harry disagree on how they should raise their children which is something they should have discussed before they ever got married. And then their businesses are continuing to fail and flop. They've lost out on millions from Spotify, potentially millions with Netflix. And it seems like they're really on already their last leg in Hollywood. And so how did Meghan Markle go from someone who was an influencer and subpar actress on a cable TV show called Suits to the Duchess of Sussex and then somehow cratering back to being an influencer, wannabe producer who's failing in that respect. It's rather fascinating to see and apparently even the British public is starting to get really, really fed up with Harry and Meghan to the point that about 52% of Britons apparently want to strip Harry of his place in line of succession, and then 51% want him to lose his title. That is a majority of the public. Now it's a very, very slim one, but I don't think that situation is gonna get any better. So we're gonna examine the spectacular fall of Meghan Markle today. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network, my name is Brittany. I provide compelling royal commentary to you all. So I'd love to have you back. There's a subscribe button down there, notification bell if you wanna click it. That would be awesome. In addition, I have a newsletter. I have a fashion channel where I go over royal fashion and then I also have a membership opportunity. So at the end of my videos, I'm gonna start listing the members and the different tiers. So I would love to see your name up there. And of course, it helps support the channel and all that we do. Next month, I'll be in Europe a lot of the month covering a whole bunch of royal events. I'll actually be doing a tour with a group of followers. Then I'm going to Sweden for the King's Golden Jubilee, the Netherlands for the opening of parliament, hopefully seeing not only the king and his wife, but their two daughters as well. So that's King Wilhelm Alexander and his wife, Maxima. And their their daughters Katharina Amalia the heir and then we have her sister Princess Alexia who just turned 18 and for the first time can participate in this event. I can't wait to see her very much dress up more in informal royal gear. Her sister's dipping into that. Now I can't wait to see what Alexia does as well because it's a rather formal occasion that I'm going to go over to see the coronation regalia over in London and then dipping down to hopefully to France and maybe catching Charles and Camilla because apparently reportedly their trip, their tour of France might be there. And then also getting some great real coverage there too. So I can't wait to share with you guys everything that is going on and getting, it's just tons of great content and coverage for you guys. I cannot wait, especially the Swedish Jubilee. Oh, so, so excited. And so before we get into Harry and Meghan, though, we do have some royals getting back to work. Yeah, so August usually is a pretty slow time in royal watching. We'll get a lot in the lead up to Christmas as September begins. But when it comes to Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, they went to oversee the anniversary of a town that had, was found 250 years ago. They are in Christianfeld in southern Jutland and so it was just really really nice to see them out and about. Somebody on my Twitter said that they had to look really closely at Crown Princess Mary for a second because she looks like Catherine and she really does. I think she is a fantastic representative of Denmark. She's actually originally from Australia, Tasmania actually. And so she has a very interesting connection there. She met Crown Prince Frederick at the Sydney Olympic Games. And so they have been together a long time now. They have four children and their oldest will be turning 18 this year. So there'll be some big celebrations in October for that. So very, very exciting. But now back to Harry and Meghan. Harry was recently on tour in Asia, not quite sure why. Apparently part of it was for a charity event where nobody really attended. He played a polo game. Apparently he did raise some money, but I'm also thinking to myself, like, dude, you could have done that in California and probably raise the same, if not more money instead of traveling 
leaving a bigger carbon footprint, which he's against, and just seeming to go on a pseudo royal tour for no reason. And then we also have Meghan's birthday, which was a bit of a letdown because I was thinking maybe the TIG would be relaunched, but we'll get there. And then Harry and Meghan were also as well stripped of their HRH titles, the rest of them on the royal website. And then Meghan went to the Taylor Swift concert where nobody saw her to the point that she had to tell People Magazine about it in order so that they could let the whole public know that she jumped up and she sang along to You Belong To Me or whatever the song is, I can't remember. Anyways, and then a couple of days later, we had a paparazzi stroll from Megan. You can almost feel that since nobody recognized her at the concert, that she had to do this paparazzi stroll because at the Taylor Swift concert, basically every celebrity got pictured by a member of the audience, especially if you were in the VIP tent. So we know for sure Megan was probably not in the VIP tent because there were a ton of celebrities in the VIP tent and nobody saw her. So she actually had to buy her tickets compared to some of those other people. And then nobody recognized her. Nobody saw her. Now maybe she, there's an opportunity to be in a suite and so maybe somebody couldn't see her, but it also raises a lot of really interesting questions about how recognizable, how marketable and bankable is somebody like Megan when every celebrity under the sun from A-list to D-list got recognized at the concerts and Meghan Markle did not. To the point that she has to be papped, apparently leaving a dental office, that seems to be the point. And as she was walking out, she's number one, dressed in a very, very heavy ensemble for the season. It looks deep winter, like in California, instead of August. Now granted, I know some parts of California, especially if you're near the coast, she's further north, it can get chilly. That just seemed like a really heavy look though. And she had this weird scarf wrapped around her neck. I mean, it was just bizarre. And I thought of something rather interesting because I know people say, oh, well, she's just doing that because she knows people talk about her and she wants the attention. And it's, it's fascinating to see because yes, she's getting attention from that, but it's almost universally negative attention. She just looks weird, she looks strange. People are questioning her intelligence, they're questioning her acumen for fashion, the weather, all these sorts of things. She looks increasingly, I hate to say it, but a little crazy. I'm like, everybody's like, why are you wearing that? Even my sister was texting me. I mean, we do talk about royals from time to time now. Not, only, not as much though, because I get to talk to you guys about it too. But there, she was texting me going, what on earth is she wearing? And my sister has spent some time in California, so she would know. Meghan Markle, regardless of what the weather, quote unquote, was like, she looks silly. And we know that she planned to have a paparazzi guy there. We know that. Now, I know some people say, well, you know, they're just stalking her. They're not, they're not. Montecito, if you don't know, can be up to couple of hours outside the heart of Los Angeles. Why would you, if you're based in Los Angeles, why would you travel all the way up to Montecito on, on the chance that you might run into Meghan Markle if you stalk her haunts? You're just not going to because what if she's not there? Then you've wasted two hours getting there, three hours going back. And I speak from experience. I had a training thing in Los Angeles one time. And so I decided one day after I was done, the training was in downtown LA. It was, it was sorted by the Grove. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the Griffin Observatory because it's sort of in town. It can't be that far away. Oh my gosh, because my training got over at five. In the traffic, it was horrendous. I spent an hour going five miles and I turned around and went back to the Grove because I'd spent all my time at the Grove because that's the only place I could figure to go during the evening time. I went back to the Grove because that was the only thing to do. Like there was just no other place to go because the traffic is so horrendous. And so, to, and there's really only one way up to Montecito unless you're flying a helicopter. No paparazzi company is gonna charge a helicopter to go up there on the off chance you might run into Meghan Markle. And even if Meghan Markle, let's say, if she went to the dentist's office as it appears, and somebody's like calling, Meghan Markle's at the dentist's office. I don't know about you, but the dental office for me usually only takes about an hour. So unless she's having a huge long procedure, she would be in and out by the time the paparazzi guy got there from Los Angeles. And again, they're not staked out in some place so far north because although celebrities live there, 
it's, it's more spread out. You're just less likely to run into people because if you're in LA and you're in, let's say Brentwood or something, yeah, you might not see Jennifer Garner, but maybe you'll see one of the Kardashians or something like that. You're more likely to see more people if you don't even see the person you're there, let's say stalking and looking to see. Montecito, you have none of those issues. <laughs> you have none of those additional benefits, I should say. So there's no point in a paparazzi guy staking out there. So we know Megan called this guy and whoever this guy, or it could be a woman, was she you know she's you know she's trying to pull her hair back and they had the video and then when she gets closer they start taking pictures so I'm sure it was the same guy and then she lifts up her wrist and you see this little thing from Newcomb it's some sort of pseudo science medical science thing that's supposed to help you calm and zen and I'm like okay number one number one you guys spent probably money although granted people might have paid you but you spent money on your PR to get a massive article in People, massive series of articles online, talking about how good the state of your marriage is, and then you're walking around showing off your stress patch. <laughs> that doesn't work! You can't do that! You can't do that because all, it makes me think is, yes, your life is stressful, because the whole series of articles, it wasn't even, not only just about their marriage, but it was about their businesses as well. And she's walking around with a thing saying, basically, I am stressed. And I, if I was a Netflix executive, I'm, I would be going, we've given you every single opportunity. You do literally nothing. How are you stressed? We just bought you a property for you to use because you couldn't figure out what to do. So we did it. So we had control of it. When it comes to meet me at the lake, Netflix bought it. So Netflix controls it. Bottom to dollar, that, that is what is happening there. Harry and Meghan can get their shot at it. But much like in Hollywood, if they fail, Netflix is like, okay, we'll take all your work here. We're gonna give it to somebody else and they can see it through. Mark my words, that might be what happens here. Strong, strong possibility. And so she's just screaming that she's stressed, but also a lot of people wondering, okay, you're sh cl very clearly showing the off thing as people pointed out. She had folded a little bit of that, only that coat arm down, almost as if to say, hey, look at this. Take a picture of this, show this, so people will buy more because Perhaps she's merching. And when I looked at that, I couldn't help but see, okay, honey, you were at one point a duchess, a royal. You were walking around. You could have lived in tiaras, not all the time, but you could have had access to tiaras, state visits. Who goes to the most foreign royal events? Why it's Sophie and Edward, who are much further down the line of succession than you were in your husband. And you had all these fantastic opportunities. Amazing doors could have been open. But instead, you decide to jump ship, make outrageous demands that you have no leverage to make happen. And then you wind up in California. Your businesses are starting to fail. Your acting career never got off the ground to begin with. It ain't going to do that now. And you're literally back to doing what you did when you first met Harry which was influencing. So all of a sudden she's gone from influencer to royalty, back down to influencer. It's a catastrophic really fall from grace in so many ways. Like this is a catastrophic, it's like literally like she walked up 20 stories on a ladder and somebody knocked it down and she's back down to square one. That, that's the analogy I think as you think so, social climbing, so she social climbed, she kept going and then pew, pew, how did this happen? How did this happen? I did a little bit of a Twitter post on it, but I really wanted to explore this idea more because in so many ways, Meghan Markle did not understand what royalty entailed. And as a result, she lost out on everything, on everything, and literally ended up in the exact same place she was when she met Harry. And it started at the beginning, because I noticed initially, definitely, she was courting the press from day one. As soon as the story broke, I mean, she had been trying to break the story of her and Harry dating for, I think, quite a while before somebody finally ca caught up on it. She couldn't do it overtly because she was still in the process of ensnaring him, but once it became public, she made the demands on him, hey, I'm gonna dump you unless you make a bombastic, massive statement to the rest of the world. And Harry did that. Harry played her game and it put them off on the wrong foot with the press immediately. And then you get to the engagement. And as it turns out throughout their whole dating process, pretty much everybody in Harry's life told him, hey, you know, you might want to slow down here. 
we're not quite sure about her. There are some things we don't really like. There's some, some red flags here, some red warnings. And Harry very much was bullheaded and charged through, even though a lot of these concerns were well-founded and I'm sure given to him with a lot of like, I love you, I wanna support you, but I see some problems here. And Harry was too pig-headed to understand that they were really actually trying to help him. So they got to this engagement and Megan, obviously, there's always this one picture. She's like, ah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know that was in the process. It doesn't look as bad in the video, but I remember seeing that picture and going, oh, she loves this way too much. I was never a fan of her because I always thought she craved attention and that was not going to work with somebody who's further down the line of succession. It's just not gonna work. The monarchy, whoever's at top is king. This is a hierarchy. This is not up for debate. Just because you think you're awesome does not mean everybody else does too. <laughs> and so, and then you have the engagement interview. And I just remember when she said, well, you know, we don't have tabloids here in the States. I'm like, yes, we do. What are you talking about? And of course they have the Royals on them. They don't usually have good information, but we have plenty of tabloids here. And you know that because you paid photographers to try to get your pictures in the tabloid and nobody would buy them because nobody knew who you were. This is a woman who has forever in her entire life craved Fame, but she fundamentally misunderstood what royalty could do for her because she wanted it to be like Hollywood. She wanted instant gratification. Royalty is not a short game. It's the long game. Catherine has played it exquisitely well. You have to be very cautious. You have to slowly let yourself blossom rather than running like a bull through a china shop and making outrageous demands, which was what Megan did as soon as she got that ring on her finger. She was making crazy mad demands and they're trying to placate her, but the staff members are her employees. Well, technically even the employees of the palace of the whole monarchy system play, paid for partly by the sovereign grant taxpayer money. They're not there as her servants. She cannot order them to do excessive amounts of things. You cannot order them around 24 seven. That is not their job. Their job is yes, to serve you, to work with you, but you need to see them as employees, not servants. But she saw them as people who could serve her rather than her serving them and by extension, the broader UK public. And I do think that the relationship between royals and their staff members does become rather close because by necessity, these people have to keep confidences. And yes, there's an NDA and all sorts of things involved, but I think too, if you are kind to them, kindness translates. If you are good to them, they feel like they have a connection with you and they're more willing to protect you. They're more willing to go the extra mile for you just simply because they like you. They understand what's going on behind the scenes with you and your family. They understand the struggles, the strife, the tensions, all these sorts of things. And so they're more than willing to be flexible and bend when something just doesn't quite go the way you want it to. There's some frustrations behind the scenes, all these sorts of things because they respect you. They have admiration for you and you have as a royal admiration and respect for them and their job in return. So there becomes this very close bond. But Megan, again, she alienated all the royal staff members under her guard. Like even the people she later hired who were supposedly more her style or whatever, they were also alienated too because she couldn't figure out how to temper her demands, temper her desire to for the world to see her as a duchess, as this perfect model, as this great ambassador and all these sorts of things. And the royals were like, you're great, but you're, you're, you're not that great. And then when she went on this tour of Australia, she saw all these people there and she just thought they were there for her. No, 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 they're there for the Duchess of Sussex. Whoever that happened to be, that could be Meghan Markle, that could have been Cressida, that could have been Chelsea, the same freaking crowds would have shown up. Regardless of who held that title, it's the title, not the person that the people are there to see. They're there to see the royal, the title, Harry. They're there to see the monarchy. They're not there necessarily to see you as an individual person. And Megan, again, she had been somebody who had been desperate for Hollywood, desperate for Hollywood validation. She probably has gone on hundreds, if not thousands of auditions only to have the door slammed in her face every single time almost. This woman hardly had a decent gig. She had very, very tiny minuscule parts, usually one line, sometimes not even a line as in the case of Beverly Hills 90210, the reboot. She just did not have the talent really to be in the industry. And the industry was like, well, you're okay, but 
you managed to get this job in suits, but what they did, I think, on that series is that they managed to make the character her. So she was basically herself. And so that's not really acting. And yes, Megan had hustle, but the hustle has come back to bite her. So she had done this tour, then she got pregnant, and then she got super weird about her privacy and everything, the privacy of the child. And then so she's lying, Harry and Meghan deliberately lying to people about when she went into labor, and then coming out and going, oh yeah, we've given birth, here he is, isn't he cute, it's a boy. And the press are sitting there going, but you you told, like the palace told us you were in labor. And that may be what she told the palace, but it definitely wasn't true. And when you start to lie like that, Nobody takes that lying down. That starts to come back and bite you really, really spectacularly. And so her and Harry, they're all up, you know, they're, let's <laughs> say it because it makes it sound bad. But maybe they're all up on hallucinogenics. I want to say they were sniffing glue, but that's not really the right analogy. But it's like they're, they're so, they're not sniffing glue. They're sniffing their own egos. Let's say it that way. And so they're getting huffed and puffed and puffed and puffed. And they're like, oh, everybody's coming to see us. We're great. We're great. And, the, but the press, they're just not falling in line. Look at this. They're not, they're not screaming our our favor and everything from the hilltops and they should be we're awesome and so they decide well we're going to go to canada for christmas one of the last christmases actually they could have spent with her majesty the queen and for prince philip by the way actually it was the last christmas and they missed out on that bravo guys and so they are all up on their own egos their own fame their own fortune all this sorts of things because i think megan went into the royal family thinking she would get all these things servants tiaras castles money up the wazoo all these sorts of things that just are not what happens within a royal sphere royals have to work within you have to be ostentatious yet not too ostentatious you have to show your jewels yet not too much jewels there's this very careful balance royals have to have to walk in order to have the status and be seen as royalty yet also be approachable to the average joe again very careful balance here and so Harry and Meghan said, you know what? We're not going to do this. But we are awesome, though, because I'm mixed race. That's what Meghan's thinking. So Meghan was like, Harry, you know what we're going to do? We're going to create this website. Tell the royals exactly what we want. We're going to make the announcement. Not tell anybody. Not tell any of them until a couple minutes before. Let them stew in it. And then bada bing, bada boom, we'll get everything we want. And then we can start making more money because, Harry, this is not enough money for me. I want to live lavishly. Frogmore Cottage, eh, it's okay, but... I, I don't need a cottage. I need a castle. I need a mansion. I need something massive that shows that I'm the Duchess of Sussex. And what I forgot to mention, which I think is also critical here, is that Megan fundamentally understood how a monarchy hierarchy works. And I think part of the problem is I think she did sort of, to a certain extent, re understand that, yes, the queen is in charge. But Camilla at the time that Catherine married in. Camilla was Duchess of Cornwall. Catherine was the Duchess of Cambridge. Meghan was the Duchess of Sussex. I think Meghan thought because they all shared the Duchess title that they're all equal. Not only, she also thought that she was smarter than both of them, more capable, more worldly, all these sorts of things. But I think because they all shared the Duchess title, she thought they were all the same. And so when her and Harry initiated Mexit, she's thinking, well, of course they'll give in to our demands. I'm mixed rates. I'm a Duchess like Catherine and Camilla. I'm great. Crowds come out to see me. See me, see me, 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 Megan. Uh, so that's what she was thinking. And then the Royals looked at the pro proposal and were like, no. And I think Harry and Meghan were taken aback by that because she didn't realize they had no leverage for this deal. They had no leverage to make these demands. They're not Edward. They're not the future king. So because of that, the royal family's like, well, we have George, Charlotte, and Louis. Yeah, it'll take them about 15, 20 years to get and become working royals, but we have them. We have Prince Edward and Sophie, the Countess of Wessex at the time, now the Duchess of Edinburgh. We have Princess Anne. We have you know, the Duke of Kent, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, P Princess Alexander. Yes, they're older, but hey, we don't have to bother with all these headaches that you bring us every single day. We don't have to deal with the staff turnover, the staff discontent. Be on your merry way. And Harry and Meghan did. And in a great, I want to say divine piece of intervention here, <laughs> COVID struck right as they were supposed to strike out on their own. And so everything locked down, which is rather hysterical because you make this big bada bing bada boom statement it gets completely slapped down and then you're basically drifting <laughs> because the whole world 
it's on standstill. It was about September and November or October of 2020. So that's almost three years ago now, basically, they secured deals with Spotify and Netflix. The tunes upwards and, and publishing till upwards of $150 million. And then everybody's talking about, oh, they're gonna have this billion dollar brand. They're gonna do great. This is gonna be fantastic, everything. And then we get the Oprah Winfrey interview. And I'm sure Netflix and Spotify were thinking about that going, you know, that would have been great on our platform. That would have been really, really good. And of course, Harry and Meghan didn't, didn't see the wisdom in waiting. They just want to chat with Oprah again. And while they got an initial bump from that, as the lies started to be unraveled and as things didn't make sense, slowly their popularity once again started to dip. And then when it came to all these deals, they had crickets. Crickets. They could not come up with properties. They could not come up with anything. We were promised a look into their real life and it took them two and a half years to get their documentary finally completed. And it's like, for what? What was your big reveal at the end? I, I, it's been a while since I've watched the whole thing. I don't even remember what was supposed to be their big bada bing bada boom moment. The mo moment where they won, the moment they triumphed and all this sort of stuff. It kind of ended with a whimper. And before that, Megan released Archetypes, which had a, a little bit of a nice start and then just plummeted. And even Megan stands on Twitter, oh my gosh, she kept, they always go, well, she had the number one podcast. I'm like, do you guys know how like things work that people can artificially promote things if they control it? If she had been on an actual rating system, I think her thing would have been pretty pitiful. After all, I don't even think her first episode ever broke into the top five and her first episode did by far the best of anything else. And she had the announcement basically that Serena Williams was retiring. So Spotify was like, we're done. Netflix is not too bad right now, but I think they're on, they're on thin ice. I think they really are on thin ice because Netflix was looking at live to lead and they're going, nobody cared. I liked how somebody said it, it went, it was announced and it was met with indifference and it was, nobody cared. And so what are they supposed to do now? They've, they've cycled through everything. Well, now Netflix has purchased a property for them, which Netflix control and Netflix can pull if they decide Harry and Meghan aren't worth the effort anymore. Because what I found was interesting with the Spotify deal as well, and I think I mentioned this in my live stream, is that it was talked about how Spotify, it was hard to get messages to Harry and Meghan and Harry and Meghan to get messages back. And I think that's because Harry and Meghan were very much acting like they thought, quote unquote, Royals Act. So they were making their staff members do things and they wanna directly contact lower level, who they consider lower level producers from Spotify who were actually mixing and creating the podcast. Megan would only go to the head of creative who signed them to begin with. So she's going to somebody at the, the cabinetry level, like a vice president for probably, well, they, they had this pause in too long in the episode, they need to edit that. And I'm sure Spotify was like, you need to actually contact the people who are working on their stuff. Why are you contacting the head of this? This person has another job. This person signed you, yes, but it's not their job to tell somebody else to do the edits that you told them to make because you can't tell the people directly to make the edits for you. I hate that kind of stuff. I really, really do. You're not big enough to let be kind to somebody and to work with them to get a project completed. You know, good producers, good directors, they'll work with everybody. And at the end of the day, they'll get the product done instead of you who could not, could only communicate with certain people. And that stuff, again, that gets around the entertainment industry. It really does. And since obviously the disastrous car chase story in, in New York City, I feel like everything after from that point has been a hit. You know, the, they lost the Spotify deal, Netflix is tenuous, their HRH have been stripped from the website. I mean, so many other things, I can't even remember them all here. But it's been an epic disaster of a summer for them. And when Megan walked out of that dentist's office, what we all saw again was her doing something she had done before. She cycled through all the things she can. She wanted to be a podcast producer, failed. She wanted to be a podcast host, failed. She wanted to be a children's book author, failed. She wanted to be a wannabe producer, pretty much fail. And so to the point that she is basically back at square one. She's hustled herself from an influencer to the pinnacle of social success. There is nothing more powerful than royalty, really, in terms of celebrity in a lot of ways. And what's funny is I think Hollywood knew that. I'm sure a lot of people in Hollywood are going, you're coming back here, really? Really? And there was some sort of curiosity factor, but at some point too, people were like, 
Okay, you were royal, and now you're here acting like me, yet you still want me to treat you as royalty. And I'm sure some people in Hollywood were like, I'm not playing that game. You left that world. You're here now. You're, you're at the baseline like everybody else. Yes, you got a couple of good deals, but you're, you're baseline in here. You, you, you were at the peak. But now you come down and you've been with us. And now she's descended even further, I think, into influencer status. She hustled herself into royalty only to hustle herself back into influencer status. And the thing is, is that she might even hustle herself, her husband, and her children out of royal titles and their place in the line of succession. The Daily Mail recently posted a poll as it was done by the Delta, but they have pulled about 1500 people. And that is a small sample, but if you get people of a lot of demographic backgrounds, you get a pretty good segment of what the population is feeling. And apparently 52% of people want Harry and I believe his children too, to be stripped of their place in the line of succession. And then beyond that, you have 51% who want his title pulled. And now before you think that, oh, that means that 48% are opposed to Harry losing it. No, no, no. It's only 27 who are percent who are totally opposed to Harry losing it. 21% are indifferent. And so Harry and Meghan are really at the risk of losing basically everything that made them marketable in Hollywood to begin with. And Hollywood has already woken up to the fact that their royal title did not imbue them with any talent beyond what they already had, which was not a lot. And so Hollywood is basically taking a couple of giant steps back from them. And Meghan Markle will never ever get the deals at the level she did when they initially went to Hollywood. And she's basically hustled away the future of her family in some ways, trying to hustle so badly to make money, to be famous, to be better than the royals. Her desire to crush the royals because they didn't abide by the rules in the Bible of Meghan Markle is what's going to destroy her in a lot of ways. Royals, if you work within the system, much like in the medieval times, if you curry favor with different people, if you're nice, if you're good, if you're, yes, there's scheming that's involved to a certain extent, I think more in like medieval times and stuff like that. But if you are an asset, A, they want to keep you and B, you get to do some pretty cool things. So when it comes to tiaras, the person who wears a tiara more than anyone else in the British royal family is Sophie the Duchess of Edinburgh. She goes to the other coronations oftentimes, not all the time, but she goes to birthday parties, she goes to weddings, and oftentimes, sometimes those events require tiaras, so she gets to wear one at the reception dinner or at the wedding itself. She's walking around in a tiara. She gets to wear one a couple of times a year usually, whereas Catherine, usually it's relegated to at least maybe three times, so that's usually two state visits and the diplomatic reception in December. We never get any good videos from that. Come on, Charles, let us in on these events a little more. We need to see some good tiara sparkle here. We do. So Meghan and Harry would have been that at some point. They would have been the ones going to these foreign royal events, making all these connections and having this great prominent status while Catherine and William did some more of the other royal work there in the UK. They would have gotten immense privileges. Yes, they may have had Frogmore Cottage for a while, but they might have been elevated to somewhere else. It was always been said that that Kensington Palace was working on the, the apartment A. Catherine, have, Catherine and William have 1A. I think it's apartment one or apartment A. I think it's for apartment one. They were redoing that. It had been where the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester lived. They were do redoing that for Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan, especially Meghan Markle, it's, it's been fascinating to see a woman who had every opportunity to succeed and yet has trashed every single one of them and made her and her husband's lives exceptionally more difficult than they had to be. Everything for Harry and Meghan is a battle. It's a battle all the time. It's a fight because they can't work within the system. They always have to game it. They always have to one up it. They always have to fight against it. When flowing with things and changing things gradually, that's what rivers do. Rivers gradually carve out things within the wilderness. It's not something that they do. They don't switch from going this way to that way. They slowly over time move and that's how you change things oftentimes. Royalty is not a sprint. It's a marathon. You have to work at it. It's slow. It's tedious. It's probably not all that fun, but at some point you get to the place where you can be really, really comfortable in your role. You see even Princess Anne. Harry could have been William's Princess Anne. 
Princess Anne on the dais, when they did the coronation picture, she was on the same level as her brother. Why? Because Charles has an immense amount of respect for her because she has wanted always to serve the crown. She hasn't wanted to serve herself, she's wanted to serve the crown. And Harry and Meghan fans like to cite, well, service is universal. Well, I'm sorry, but service starts at home. If you can't serve your own family members, then what right do you have to serve anybody else in the world? How can you be helpful to anybody else if you are rude, awful, terrible to your own family members? Meghan Markle had the golden opportunity, but somehow when she kissed her prince, she turned him into a toad. And I think you could say herself as well. <laughs> she is the frog who jumped into boiling water and wasn't able to get out. She's basically landed exactly where she was. She's hustled herself back from being a duchess into an influencer. And it's unbelievable, it's crazy, and Meghan Markle, what were you thinking? <laughs> because honey, you could have had it all. You could have had it all. But now, you'll never have it and perhaps you won't even have that Duchess of Sussex title to fall back in. Your children will no longer be a prince and princess because you hustled yourself just a little too much and hustled yourself out of royalty. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of Meghan Markle's catastrophic fall from, not really grace, but from royalty back to influencer. It's it's epic. I think that will be the thing people write history books about. It's not Meghan Markle as this great agent of change, but how she is really the modern incarnation of Icarus. So guys, again, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for all my members. Our first membership video will be available on the 15th. I'm so excited. That'll be for my prince and princess levels. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.